All right, folks, it is July of 2024. I am back from my multi-week darkness retreat and a uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of activity in the rulemaking world occurred while I was gone. Uh, of course, my biggest fear, I'm you know in the middle of nowhere on top of a mountain and then I get a raven sent to me that says there's things happening with the rule. You're welcome. And, by the way. Uh, you know, apparently, apparently some things are going to be here sooner than we expect uh the end of summer break and everybody going back to school uh, gta 6 is going to be here soon at long last uh fun fact we've had an internal bet as to whether the rule will happen before gta 6 or the other way around uh the betting pool is fierce and apparently the 32 cfr cmmc final rule will be here much much sooner than anybody anticipated, whether you were looking at historical statistics, whether you're going off of DUD rhetoric, or whether you're going off of LinkedIn hive mind denialism and predictions about the CMMC program, uh, there is some news. So just 185 days, only 185 days. The government doesn't do anything in 180 days. Uh, in just 185 days after the CMMC proposed rule was published, DOD has officially submitted the text of the 32 CFR CMMC final program rule and all supporting CMMC model documentation to OIRA for final regulatory review. This is the last step before publication of the final rule in the Federal Register. So in general, OIRA has only 90, maybe 120 days to complete their review. However, we'll just get the this part out of the way right now. I don't think it's going to take them that long because they just did their regulatory review for the proposed rule six months ago. And there obviously won't be any major changes because we adjudicated an absolute ton of public comments so there definitely weren't any major changes to the rule because we just took the comments and then now the rule's done. So it wasn't like they had to go make any big edits to the substance of the rule. So I think that that 90 to 120 day window could be much shorter than what is standard on paper. And that puts the final publication window, even if they did take the full amount of time, sometime between late September and late October of 2024, if we're being conservative, if we're being conservative, it would be late September to late October of 2024. And as of the time of this conversation, that's only like two or three months away. And that's much earlier than DOD's original late Q4 estimate for when the final rule would actually be published. Just so everybody knows, we're sort of front loading a lot of the information here. Once the final rule is published in the Federal Register, there will be a waiting period of about 60 days before the rule is effective. That has to do with the fact that this is what's known as a major rule, and all major rules are reviewed by Congress before they have an effective date. So you'll see final rule publication, and then on that entry in the Federal Register, it'll say effective date, whatever, 60 days later. And at that point, the effective date, once that's done, that's it. CMMC is codified in black and white, the 32 CFR program is on the books as an official regulation and CMMC after years of waiting will officially be official. There will be no more guessing about what the nature of the program will look like. So when DOD, as they have recently said, says that they want assessments to begin happening in Q1 of 2025, you really should believe them because they don't talk about this part of the rulemaking process very much. It's just, oh, a rule was published or we're waiting for the rule to be published. This is the signal that if DOD had their way, if they didn't have to send it through final regulatory review and all the red tape, the rule that is submitted to OIRA is the rule that DOD would publish, the final rule. So in DOD's mind, it's done. It's over. It's just waiting for the paperwork to get processed. So you come out of your cave and four and a half minute lead ins is what we've got going. That's on, right. right. Yeah. A little rusty, yeah, but that's okay. It's okay. Listen, man, 
Uh, it takes about 14 squirrels a day to feed a raven, and we had to keep four on end ready for them to come to you. There's not a squirrel to be found in my neighborhood right now. I think my neighbors are thankful. Their bird feeders are full. Let's talk about the last time that you were in a cave, right? No, well, last time you went to a deep, dark retreat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like last time you're in a cave, it might be a different story. But look, man, the last time that you went on one of these retreats, Jacob, you emerged and you came out like, um, um, uh, what's it, a beautiful mind, right? Where we're just spitting out stuff and you're spitting out beautiful mind letters here. They're like Zach Galifianakis and in, 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 in that in imaginary that friends, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, Math yeah, dude, so, and and what you were saying is, is that. I've analyzed rules and just the rulemaking timelines from this period to this period um, based on DOD rules uh, or all rulemaking, right? And this is the timeline that we were expected. And you said, aside from some outliers, we could expect for this to happen. And then all of a sudden, you disappear in a cave again. I think it's a conspiracy theory. And if this was a Scooby-Doo episode and we pulled a mask off of you, you may be one of the people that's like, <laughs> have you ever seen me and the I'm not sure. rule reviewers in the same room at the same time? Wake up, sheeple. No, and it's kind of convenient how you always go on these vacations and you emerge and there's something cool for you, you to talk know? about. What do you know? All, all a conspiracy. Can't yeah, let me tell you about the convenience. Somewhere. Let me tell you about the convenience factor of living with tremendous anxiety while we're trying to play frisbee on the beach. And I'm like, is there anything yeah. happening with this rule? But I've, this, I've lived this tortured existence for the last four years. But we did all this research, right? Or you did, we, you did all of this research uh, on your retreat to come out with these numbers so that we could kind of anticipate when this rule was. And you said, except for these outliers. And then the rule turns out to be an outlier because they are at lightning speed. Yeah. But also you kind of contradicted your, or not contradicted your argument, but you kind of complimented your argument by saying there's an election coming. They're moving fast. We think they're going to move before the election. And you're like, oh, this is why it's an outlier. And it's just all coming true to form. Not just in this rule, but we see it in 48 CFR coming back to yeah. life and other things coming down the pipeline. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we've been talking about the fact that the rule will probably go faster, or at least that there's a good reason to believe that DUD will beat the historical average of how long a rule takes because of a bunch of external factors. The fact that uh, agencies have more rulemaking done in the final year of administration, which is uh, on top of that reinforced by OMB wants to finish rulemaking before a potential change in administration because OMB works for the administration, right? So they want right. to finish all the rulemaking before there's a potential change. Um, there, you know, it's, there's just a lot of reasons. We've covered it in the past. We'll link to those episodes for why we think that the DOD is going to go faster in order to beat the election. But you are correct. So a couple of vacations ago, I spent that time, you know, crunching the numbers on how long it takes a rule to go from proposed to final because for uh, a, a couple of years there, basically 2021 until the end of 2023, we were waiting on the proposed rule as they were sort of deep in the depths of the actual sausage making process to get the text of the rule together. But nobody really knows how long it takes for a proposed rule to go to final. They just say, oh, rulemaking takes like one to two years, but that's just to get to the proposed rule. So on average, as we've talked about many times, for DOD to go from a proposed rule to a final rule, inclusive of holidays, administration changes, all that stuff, all the way back to 2009, it takes them on average 283 business days. That's the 5% trimmed mean. So you get rid of the, the, the handful of very, very big rules and the handful of like 30 day rules, and you end up with 283 business days. Uh, it turns out that with the CMMC program rule, one of the biggest, most controversial, most impactful rules that DOD has ever issued, because they don't really interface with the public very often, um, they beat that estimate or they beat that average by 55%. So it took DOD 127 business days to go from the proposed rule published at the end of 2023 to submitting the final rule to OIRA. Uh, for pu publication of the final rule in the Federal Register. 55% faster. That is definitely an outlier for sure, especially given the fact that, as we know, during the public comment period between December and February, there were over 1,800 individual public comments that had to be adjudicated. And this is why I say there probably won't be very many changes in the final rule, because that's a lot of comments, and they clearly 
didn't spend a lot of time making changes to 1,800 public comments because it only took them six months, two of which were receiving comments. So the comment period was two months. Four months after the comment period is closed, they've like put a bow on it and they're ready to go. So probably a strong indicator that the rule hasn't changed very much. One thing I wanted to talk about, oh, go ahead. Oh, well, I was just gonna ask a quick question. So um, you know how like in the draft, the, the comments were actually placed in the draft and the responses to the yeah. to, to the last CMMC rule. Is that something that's gonna be customary in the final rule or no? Yeah, final rules will always have responses to public comments. That was one of the quirks of the proposed rule was that they sort of preemptively responded to public comments on the 2020 CMMC rule. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's one of the things that we said was a reason to believe that they're going to go faster rather than slower because they sent it to SBA, the Small Business Administration, before they sent it for regulatory review to sort of cut off criticisms of small business impact. They responded to public comments in a proposed rule, and you typically don't do that until a final rule to sort of preempt public comment responses. They did their comment adjudication on a rolling basis over those two months rather than waiting for the 60 days and then going from from the start with the whole pile of comments, which saved a ton of time. Uh, so there were just a lot of reasons to believe that they were going to go faster. And they did. They went way faster, way, way faster. So one thing to talk about real quick for everybody is just this quick timeline review. So just a quick timeline review to catch everybody up on where we've been and where we're going. So after the original 2020 CMMC rule, which created the DFARS contract clause 252204-7021, which says go get a specific CMMC level certification, the DUD spent all of 2021 reviewing the program. Do we want to keep the program? Do we want to change the program? Do we want to kill the program? What are we going to do? So 2021 was this big period of uncertainty where we didn't really know what DOD was going to do. At the end of 2021, they announced CMMC 2.0, and we went from five levels to three levels. We introduced POAMs, we introduced waivers, we introduced all these changes. But the big part about that announcement was the fact that they were going to pursue rulemaking for a second CMMC rule. Rather than only having a contract clause, they were going to take all of these details for the program and they were going to codify it at Title 32 of the Code of Federal Regulations, where national security government programs live, which makes total sense. They should have done that all along, honestly, but they were going as fast as possible circa 2019, 2020. The problem with that was there was all this hype leading up to the 2020 rule. And now all of a sudden we have to go into a holding pattern for a year or two while they craft this second CMMC rule. And this really created a big problem because people perceived this holding pattern as an increasing amount of confirmation that CMMC wasn't happening. Whereas if you understand rulemaking, you know the fact that they're pursuing another rule to reinforce the program is as big of an indicator as you can have that CMMC is a humongous priority for the department. It just takes a while for the rule to be done. So we spent those two years until the end of 2023, when the proposed rule was published, basically pleading with people to say, no, 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 no. They're doing another rule. So you need to use this time to do your implementation so you're ready. Because once those two rules are done in a year or two, that's it. There's no more negotiating. So in, from your to your knowledge, do you think that there was any strategy behind this to the effects of then they can start doing updates to one rule or the other without disrupting the program altogether for the updates? Or does it make it easier because now you have um, kind of containerized the different elements of the rule to, to focus on it? Or yeah. would, it, would it not make a difference when it came to like revising the rule period just because? Yeah, like something well, to control like the size of the rule would help it get through the rulemaking process easier is kind of what I'm getting at. Like, is that maybe part of the strategy from your knowledge, like something that? You yeah, think I be... think that, that that's part of it. It definitely makes it easier. I think that in 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 reality, what they did in 2020 was not really the proper way of going about it because they created a contract clause that said, go comply with this program. But the program wasn't documented anywhere in official regulatory, you know, uh, you know, regulatory text, it just right. existed in the ether somewhere. 
So they really needed to have a 32 rule and a 48 rule in 2020, but they didn't do that. And that's Can I part ask a of the dumb reason. Question? Yeah, yeah. All right. Do you think that maybe like that <laughs> delay or the mysterious holdup with the 48 CFR rule had something to do with the 32 CFR not being like close to being finished, right? And that, do you know, you know what I mean? Like, because yeah, yeah. that whole thing is contingent on one, one is contingent on the other. Like they don't exist without one another, right? Right. And one is more so important. Do you think that just because of the timeline, it's a little bit eerily suspicious that, hey, 32 CFR is kind of near in the end and then bam, 48 CFR. All of a sudden, I think that's exactly what, what, you know, oh, okay. I think that, that makes total sense that that would happen. I remember back when they announced CMMC 2.0 in at the end of 2021, they said that the rulemaking for these two things would would happen in a staggered fashion. Specifically, the rulemaking wouldn't have to be sequential in the sense that you don't have to wait for 32 CFR to be final and effective to then begin revising the 48 CFR clause. You can almost be done with the 32 CFR rule and then uh, update the 48 clause to match it, which is exactly what we're seeing. We'll have to go sleuthing on the Internet for quotes from the DOD about staggered rulemaking, but that's exactly what they said they were going to do back in 2021. So like we said, at the end of 2023, the day after Christmas, they finally published the 32 CFR proposed rule. Longtime listeners will remember we had an eerily similar conversation to this episode in July of 2023 when they sent the rule to OIRA for final review, right? So mm -hmm. we had a big episode and we said, hey, 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 <clears throat> this is the signal that the rule is coming uh, because it you know, has been sent up to OIRA for final review. After the proposed rule was published uh, the day after Christmas, there was this standard 60-day comment period. They received over 1,800 public comments. By far, as far as I can tell, since 2009, the most amount of public interaction through public comments on any DOD rule ever. Uh, no question, at, no question at all. Uh, and then just six months later, just 185 days later, uh, <laughs> that's 185 days from the publication of the rule, just four months after the end of the comment period, the DOD sent the final rule to OIRA, the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs, the part of OMB that's responsible for shepherding the rulemaking process for final review, beating the average time for that process by 55%. Big deal, huge deal, but that's what's happened. Let's talk about what's happening because that's what people are actually going to be interested in. So the future timeline. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't just come out and say, hey, Jacob, come on, buddy. You can't, you cannot come out and say that, hey, just glossing over the fact that this is 55% faster than rules typically, right? You know, I, for, you know, we have spent, we have been in an industry for, Two plus years that has been like the DOD is taking forever, like to do everything, right? And then the one time they knock it out of the park and then all of a sudden get on the NIST bandwagon on releases, things start popping out ahead of schedule. You know, I like, just, you know I just what? posted it. I just I just posted it Good. up. It was something I was thinking about while I was uh, great job on your huge achievement. So let's yeah, look while, to the future. While now. I was meditating like, in the while I was meditating in the desert, I thought about this. Back in the day, not so long ago, honestly, when DOD uh, took a little bit longer to go through the rulemaking process, all we heard about was, oh, it's delayed. Oh, it's delayed. CMMC is delayed. Is CMMC going to happen? And there were all these editorials and headlines and all this confirmation bias flying around. It's delayed. It's delayed. It's delayed, even though the details of how the rulemaking process would sort of illustrate that it's not actually as much of a delay as you're implying it is. It's a little dishonest in terms of the coverage. And now, and now DOD has beat not only their own estimate by a couple months, but the historical average by 55%, nothing, nothing, cricket. They, we don't hear anything. There's like one story out there that says final rule goes to OIRA. There's nothing like, oh, record breaking acceleration. Whoa. The, 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 it doesn't, the doesn't get you clicks. The, like it there's no, clicks. there's no, they no. burned the midnight oil and everything is going faster than expected. We only heard that kind of coverage when it looked like CMMC was precarious. Or and is it, 
So, so have you ever, hold on. So my mom has this line that she used on me once, but we don't reward fish for swimming, right? You've I got mean, to you reward fish for swimming real fast. No, you don't. You, but you, you, you're going to have to swim no matter what. You're going to have to make this rule no matter what because you've got this program that you got to implement. So maybe that's the case, right? We're not patting you on the back because you're finally doing what we expected of you because we expected you to move at, at light speed, right? You know, like I, I just, I guess, I just think I just took a little exception. I just don't want the DoD to triangulate my position. And I listen, bro. I, I thought they did a great job. You just glossed over it. Let's talk about the future. They did a great job. They did it. They did something tremendous. One hundred percent. It is incredible how fast they went. Uh, Thank you. Please I don't, don't triangulate Jacob's think, position either. I don't necessarily think. Yeah, call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> call I don't the call them off. Call them off. I don't think that <laughs> they're, just, <laughs> they're circling overhead every episode, folks. So I don't think that it's really hit me. Uh, how fast it's gone. And I don't think it's really going to hit people until the rule is published. Uh, like most things, I don't think it's going to really hit people until this thing really starts. For Lockheed calls their suppliers and says, get certified or else click. Or Lockheed just stops calling until you get certified, even though DOD has zero control over those effects. And that I admit- reality is getting closer and closer by the day, faster than we expected. When the news broke, I admit it was too good to be true. And I did the old newspaper, two sources, you know what I'm saying? Like the confirmed two sources before we go live with it, just to make sure. Because I was like, no, there's no way. Wait a minute. Way? This is awesome. Like, and then raving away. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, there's, it's just, it's, yeah. The, the, the rate at which they went through the rulemaking process is definitely uh, incredible and mm-hmm. something that we'll be analyzing in the future. Um and, you know, I think we've conveyed that. So what yeah. other people are concerned about is, okay, great. They went fast. So what? You guys did an episode about this literally a year ago that it went to OIRA. There was a rule that was published. Like, what does this mean? Like, what does the future timeline look like? So the 32 CFR CMC final rule will likely, very strong belief, will be published way before the election. And will likely, as a result, be effective before the end of 2024. Uh, that's that's there's zero reason to believe that they can't do that. The 48 CFR CMC rule, the one that actually revises the contract clause 252-204-7021, the one that was originally created back in 2020, will be published as a proposed rule. And I imagine that they're probably going to be published at the same time because the way that the timelines are working out, I just think it would be, if they're not published on the same day, they're probably going to be published like the same week uh, uh, together. So we're going to end up with the 32 CFR program final rule published and effective this year. We'll end up with the proposed rule for 48 CFR definitely published before the election. And like you said, the 48 CFR rule is a lot smaller. It's just the text of a contract clause that says comply with the tenets of this program over here in 32 CFR. They're just revising the language in the rule that's already there. So this isn't going to take a very long time. Uh, it's just it's just not a, as in-depth of a process as creating the 32 CFR rule from scratch. So there's an outside chance that you could have both of these rules published uh, and final b- by the end of the year, like no problem, definitely by Q1 of 2025. There's no reason that these rules will linger past that. We're talking about how fast 32 CFR goes through. And we talked about this in a previous episode that 48 CFR, I think, is going to go even faster. And the reason yeah. why is because it's not as controversial slash popular, right? So it's, it's not going to be 1800. Pu- it's not going to generate 1800 public comments. If it does, somebody's really bored. There's not that much into it to comment on, right? And, yeah. and so like, I, yeah, I agree. I think that uh, what if it just happens both day, like both in the same day, just like. I, I could definitely see them having you Thanos know, through, closes the hand through the, <laughs> there goes the supply chain through, through the magic of of the the bureaucratic process. I could easily see them having the 48 CFR proposed rule and the 32 CFR final rule published on the same day, uh, which, uh, you know, buy stock in Red Bull, everybody, because I'll be going through a whole case on that day, that week, whatever it's going to be, because it 
talking about reading a lot of rules. Final rules. You said you said proposed final. final, not final final, right? You said proposed uh, fi- and final, for, right? The because proposed rule for forty eight CFR, the yep, final okay. rule for thirty two CFR. So we. I have, just want to make sure we have sometimes I mess proposed, around. Yeah, we'd have a proposed rule. We'd have a final rule. So yep. Okay. So there's some questions that come up. I've seen come up around the rulemaking process. So we can just very quickly address some of the ones that come to uh, sort of off the top of my head here. So one of them is every time we talk about the 32 CFR rule progress, people talk about the phased rollout. This is something that we talked about in the very in-depth webinar in January that we had going over the 32 CFR proposed rule, which you can find in the links below. Uh, The phased rollout refers to the DOD inserting the DFAR 7021 contract clause into groups of contracts in phases over multiple years. They mm-hmm. aren't going to have the, the CMMC contract clause in all contracts overnight. They're, that's just not how the system is going to work. They're going to roll it out in groups of contracts in phases, hence phased rollout. However, that's talking about the clause 48 CFR CMMC clause being inserted into contracts. That has nothing to do with the 32 CFR rule program being final and effective. There is no phased rollout for the program. Once the program is effective, the program is effective. The program is live. The governance of the CMMC ecosystem is official in black and white at that point. So based off what we know about the 48 CFR rule and the rulemaking, the phase rollout can't start until the 48 CFR rule is final and effective. That could be by the end of 2024. There's a lot of reasons to believe it could be by the end of 2024. Let's just call it Q1 2025 as when they start the phase rollout. That's what DUD has said. Holidays, elections, stuff like that. Let's just call it Q1 2025. Now, that question, when does the phased rollout start? When does DUD start inserting the requirement into contracts is different from when do assessments begin? Because as soon as the 32 CFR program is effective and live and official, theoretically, assessments could start because the program is real at that point. It's a real boy at that point. So assessments can begin when the 32 CFR rule is final and effective. We think that all of that's going to happen before the end of this year because of these updates to the rulemaking process. But let's just call it Q1 of 2025 to be extremely conservative. That's not very far away. The election is like a couple months away. We're now in the seventh month of the year. We're more than halfway through the year. So Q1 of 2025 is less than six months away. Uh, It is not a lot of time. Yeah, and I I think that a lot of people get lost looking at the numbers that are presented by the DOD for the amount of contracts that are going to be impacted and affected. And you have to realize that for a contract, sometimes there are 14 to 15, maybe 16 or more suppliers that are part of that supply chain that are responsible for the delivery. And those contractual rollouts of the clause are the numbers that they're talking about of the organizations affected, impacted are organizations that are primary um, contractors or subcontractors to the primary contractors, right? And it doesn't think about those prime contractors or those subcontractors getting their supply chains in order. And the release of the 32 CFR to make the program go live could be a time where we see a lot more of companies taking it in their own hands and saying, you're in our supply chain, please start pursuing your CMMC assessment at this point. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've we've seen this in prime contractor questionnaires to their suppliers. I've, I've seen it a in, lot. And we see it all the time where yeah. they go, wh- what level of CMMC certification are you planning to pursue? And when are you planning to have it? It has nothing to do. They don't even know what contracts are coming down the road in the future, but they know it's going to be a condition of contract award for all DOD contracts. Mm-hmm. And so the 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 phased rollout of when DOD puts it into contracts is essentially arbitrary for the vast majority of the DIB who subcontract to prime contractors, especially when you think about, as we've talked about in the past, we'll link to it in below, GAO's analysis of how long it takes the average DOD contract to go from solicitation to award. Like 80 or 90% of DOD contracts out there take like maybe a couple months Maybe. And so if you're less than six months away from the prime contractor saying, go get assessed, and 
even if you were going off the phased rollout, from the time the solicitation goes out till the time it's awarded, there's only a handful of months. And you're talking about only then starting a year long, year and a half long implementation process, and then getting your certification, these contracts and awards and opportunities are just going to be flying by you without the ability to get them without some serious heavy duty waiver paperwork process that's really unattainable for the vast majority of companies out there. Long way Absolutely. of saying assessments are going to be getting much sooner than DOD's phased rollout would suggest because there's two different CMMC rules. And on top of that, there's just market dynamics that are going to be pushing assessments onto the supply chain that are completely separate from what DUD is in control of. Okay, so one of the things that we talked about earlier, will there be any major changes to the rule when it's published based off of public comments? So there were over 1800 public comments on the proposed rule. I believe there will not be very many big changes to the rule. Uh, and all the reason I believe that is look at the timeline. There was 60 days of public comments. And then four months later, the rule is done and submitted ready for publication. DUD's like, we're not changing anything else. How many changes do you think they really could have made in that time period based off of the public comments? I think that that, you know, there's always going to be tweaks to the rule. There's always going to be slight changes, but there's not going to be major structural, huge differences between the rule that was published in December and the rule that's going to be published in September, October. As much as I hope everybody watched our episode on how to craft good public comments and they executed to the T the, the, the instructions that were given as a part of you know that particular episode, I hope that there are no major changes and there's not a lot more to digest. And then it kind of it's just polished up and pushed out to us and things can move on. I think that, uh, and we'll get to this in a minute, I think that future CMMC rulemaking may make bigger changes to the program, but this round of CMMC rulemaking from proposed to final rule will not. And I think that the speed of adjudication, uh, 185 calendar days, uh, is just a very strong uh, indicator that there are not going to be- Processed by fire, 100%. Yeah, it's just not a, lot of, not a lot of changes. Okay, so last question here. What happens after the rulemaking's done? Do I just sort of go back into the genie's bottle and then wait for you know some other form of rulemaking in a different domain? Maybe, you never know. Uh, but what happens after CMC rulemaking is done? After 32 CFR is final, after 48 CFR is final, after a four to five year long process from the 2020 rule, we can all go about our separate ways and do something different. Wrong, that's not what's gonna happen. The day, the day, that the rulemaking is done for 32 CFR, CMMC 2.0, the DOD is going to start 32 CFR, CMMC 3.0 rulemaking because there's a new revision of 800 800 800-171 revision three, 800 revision one, defining all the ODPs, all of the stuff that isn't answered in this CMMC 2.0 rule is going to need to be addressed and so they're going to do another round of CMMC rulemaking after this is complete. So once this rulemaking is done, get right back on the treadmill, everybody. Assessments will still be rolling out. Everything will still be happening. Certifications will still be valid for three years. But you can tune back into the podcast for more rulemaking updates on what's going to happen in the future because we will never be free of this rulemaking this cycle. cycle. That's, just, that's just not how it works. The rulemaking it's, process is how regulation is works. Cybersecurity requirements are regulations, so rulemaking is forever. <laughs> it's a, it's Live, laugh, rulemaking. Dustin, make that sticker. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, maybe that's what we'll call it. Maybe that's what we'll call this episode. Live, laugh, rulemaking, or something. Well, <laughs> let us know in the comments. I don't know. It's, there's something there. There's something there. Only if we can put it in script on the, on the funny news. <laughs> it's the only way. If Check it's at our merch store in a few weeks, everybody. <laughs> You're coming in hot, man. It, it's it's happening. It's like yeah. it's weird. Yes, you know, like it's it's like for the longest time, I felt like this might not turn out good. I'm really confident this is going to turn out the way that we're saying it's going to turn out. But hey, guys, you got to do some on your part too. You know, like nudge it with a stick every once in a while, see if it's still there. And then now we're kind of it's like surreal, right? You're kind of sitting here and you're like, holy f. Yeah. 
yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it is really happening. It really has gone to OIRA. We got the proposed rule, and that was like a big thing of pulling teeth and getting it out there. Big public comment response, big backlash to the proposed rule, lots of attention, blah, blah, blah. There's an election coming up. There's a bunch of stuff is maybe uncertain in terms of the future of the rule. And then boom, <laughs> not even, you know, not even the end of summer. They're like, yeah, we're done. Like, it's like, you know, it's like when those videos like that you're watching somebody film from the balcony of the resort and there's a tsunami coming and you see all the people trekking it from the beach trying to be safe. And you're like looking at it from afar and you're like, Hoping that everybody, you know, see who, who runs the fastest, right? Because there's going to be people who run the fastest. You hope everybody makes it out safe, of course, but like it's just trying to see you know, who runs the fastest, who gets just, caught up. It's just one of those things. And I don't think on this show, we're never going to say, we told you so. That's just not, we're not going to spike the football oh, no. on anybody. But, but I think that people who have been watching the show for a long time know the message that we put out here. If you look at the details of the rulemaking process and we try our best to distill them and make them make sense and cut through all of the weird bureaucratic nonsense, if you look at how the rulemaking process works, it is clear as day. It has been clear as day since CMMC 2.0 was announced that this thing is real and the clock is ticking. And back two years ago, everybody was like, that's years away. And now it's like two months away. So I hope everybody has been using that time to get ready. We'll link to the webinar below. We'll link to the previous episodes below that talk about the other rule and what's been going on. We'll link to all the resources that they have on our blog and past episodes so that people can get caught up because we are quickly running out of time. So there you go, everybody. Uh, it's really happening. Hate to say I told you so, but I kept those Ravens alive for two weeks. We'll see you next week, folks. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>